Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Minnesotans of all faiths should be free to work and live out their faith in accordance with their religious beliefs. But the so-called Equal Rights Amendment, also called the ERA, undermines that right by deliberately omitting equal protection based on religion. This puts religious freedom at risk of being suppressed in the name of equality based on gender identity and a constitutional right to abortion. The proposed amendment instructs judges to apply the highest level of scrutiny to discrimination claims based on gender identity and a constitutional right to abortion, but not religion. Thus, elevating those rights over protections for religious individuals, institutions, and organizations. Although the Minnesota Constitution includes conscience protections, the so-called ERA gives judges a blank check to determine that protections for gender identity and abortion supersede protections for religious people and organizations. Even worse, the author of the so-called Equality Amendment has not been clear about its reach. Based on her testimony, it's not unreasonable to assume that a state actor will be interpreted quite broadly. This means religious organizations with a tax-exempt status or private institutions that participate in government programming could be subject to penalties under the law. Their offense? Living out their faith according to their religious beliefs here in the state of Minnesota. Living them out in the public square. Ironically, the proposed amendment forces religious organizations to acquiesce to the government's near-liturgical worship of gender ideology and abortion, or choose to violate the law. How will religious organizations or people of faith who, quote, discriminate, end quote, be treated? Will it cost them receipt of government funding, participation in programs, or loss of their tax-exempt status? Even worse, Will religious organizations and institutions be subjected to a continuous revolving door of complaints by the Minnesota Department of Human Rights or grueling litigation? Will the punishment be there for them if they do not comply with these mandates? We've seen this before in other states across the country. We've seen this in Little Sisters of the Poor. We've seen this in Cake Baker, Jack Phillips, where they are punished simply for living according to their religious beliefs in the public square. After the mere mention and introduction of this legislation last year, a nonprofit organization that serves victims of sexual abuse in Minnesota informed me that they withdrew from a state grant program at the risk of closing their doors because the state created a policy that would force them to house men who identify with women in order to receive state dollars. This amendment threatens the existence of ministries like homeless shelters, and other faith-based domestic abuse shelters that serve women and make sex-based distinctions. This could even obliterate girls-only dorms at institutions, locker rooms, and sports teams. Is that the kind of Minnesota that we want to have? Is that what equal protection means in the state of Minnesota? Put simply, the so-called Equal Rights Amendment tells many, many Minnesotans, represented by a number of diverse faith communities, that providing services across the state are not important because of their religious beliefs. It also tells them that gender identity and abortion are important, but as religious people, they are not. Friends, reporters, people listening today, that is not equality.